Welcome to the fourth episode of my NetData series. Today we're going to do the installation and basic configuration of Grafana. We can install Grafana in the same way as Prometheus, but I chose to show you the, in my eyes, proper version, which is using a .deb installer. This registers Grafana as a service, which makes it easier to run. Okay, so we are now at our system like we left it after the last video where we installed Prometheus. First up, we are going to pay the Grafana website a visit. So you just go to grafana.com slash grafana slash download, or you try to navigate there yourself, or just click on the link in the video description. Okay, there's a download website. Up here, you can select yourself like a version and the open source edition. And here are all the commands that you need to use for Ubuntu or Debian, which we are going to be using here. So let's just go back and let's just go in and paste all of the commands in. First up, we need to install uh, some dependencies. Then we can go ahead and download the grafana.deb file for installation. No, I just have to write that the correct way. DP DPKJ. I, I always fail that. Okay, and that was basically already it. So now we can take a look at sudo the service dash dash status dash all. And as you can see, there is now a Grafana server service here, which we can start sudo service Grafana server start. Okay, so now we can go ahead and connect to the Grafana server via our web browser. Okay, so we just go again to our IP on the port 3000 and there we are greeted with a nice uh, login screen here. So you're just going to log in with admin admin. We're going to change our password to something that is a little bit more secure than that. And save and now we are here on our home dashboard. So now we're just going to add a data source. We are using Prometheus, so we select that. Okay, so the URL here, we can just leave that because this is the default everything. Uh, this toggle just says that uh, Prometheus will be the default uh, data source. We can clone, save and test. And uh, yeah, we should probably really type that in here. Yeah, a little bit bad design when it like says a thing in there and then doesn't use it, but whatever. We have now configured that. If we go back, we can now add a new dashboard, add new users or explore the plugin repository, but we're just going to add a new dashboard here. And we're going to add a query. Uh, we're going to like do something with CPU usage maybe and a data. CPU use CPU percentage average. I think that one might be one that we can use here. And then we do our like curly brackets here. Uh, job netdata one one. This is the job that we added in the last video. Comma and could use a specific chart for a specific CPU. We don't want to do that. Dimension, let's do everything that is not idle. Uh, like that. And we want to do a, a sum of everything here. Come on. Put that there. And now we have our CPU utilization, for example can give it a legend, we could go into visualization and change everything here, but we're going to just leave it like that for now. We are going to look at all the things that we can do to our dashboard or to our panel here in later videos. Okay, one last thing that you now always have to do is you have to click on that save dashboard thing. Uh, it was uh, Save dashboard, save as. 
Well, because we're a new dashboard, we have to give it a name first, obviously. Duh. Let's just call that overview. Hit save. And now we have our dashboard saved. So now, uh, even if we hit a five or we come back later here, we start to so sell whatever, everything here is still there. Now that our three programs are up and running, we can take a more detailed look at them. For the next few videos, we will take a look at the more advanced configuration options that data offers. Until then, leave a sub and have a great time. See you all soon.